everyone knows that pollution is bad, right? You're familiar with the idea of people littering or companies dumping lots of gases into the sky and uh, into the atmosphere. And that makes things more difficult for us to breathe. But what about light pollution? Not something we think about. I mean, truthfully, it's not as big of an issue as regular pollution would be with dangerous chemicals, to be fair. However, it is a difficult thing for astronomers to deal with, right? So all of the advances in technology that allows us to have our civilization basically go at night, we don't have to stop just because the sun goes down, um, has a drawback or two. Here is a view of the United States during nighttime. And it's just kind of interesting. You can see how certain clusters, right? If you look at the East Coast, right over here, New York City, Florida, right? Very much lit up. If you look over here, Los Angeles, San Francisco, very much lit up. And then all of a sudden you have this huge area in the country right over here, not very lit up, right? So this is just basically showing you uh, an area where a lot of people are living, rural and urban areas but it's only in these more rural areas that you're actually able to see what is out there in the night sky. Because if you look over here on this left image right over here, this is with these extra lights that are polluting the area nearby. And then when you turn those lights off or dim them, this is what you're able to see right over there. So this is getting a glimpse of the Milky Way galaxy. And you can see this transition as you look in this diagram right over here. The inner city sky, you're only seeing a handful of stars over here on the far left. In fact, one of the ones that shines through uh, really easily are actually planets. So if you're able to see like a really, really bright star, but it's like the only star in the night sky in your New York City, it's a good chance you're looking at either Venus or Jupiter at that point. Um, because most of the stars are just not bright enough to shine through. And as we start to transition, I'd say Ultapan is more in that um, 7 slash 5 area right over here, the sur suburban slash urban transition. You're definitely able to see more stars, but not all of them. But when you trans tra uh, transfer over to the rural sky or the excellent dark sky site, it's just unbelievable the difference of what you can see. And I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to see the night sky farther away in more rural areas, but it is a sight to behold for sure. So a nebula is a large cloud of dust and gas in interstellar space and is the location of star formation. So stars come from somewhere. This is kind of like almost like baby galaxies. This is where galaxies form. There is a really famous image called the Pillars of Creation. It looks kind of similar to this one over here, but it just shows these massive clouds. And inside, these is where all these clouds are being formed. Sometimes they're called stellar nurseries because, you know, nursery is uh, where babies are taken care of. And stellar has to do with stars. So when you say interstellar, it means the space in between star systems. You can use the term interplanetary. Right, So our astronauts went into interplanetary space when they went to the moon, let's say. Uh, if you're traveling from one galaxy to another, which has never been done before, may not be possible. But the space in between galaxies would be called intergalactic space. So interstellar, not just an amazing movie, by the way, highly recommend it, maybe my favorite space movie of all time. Um, interstellar has to do with in-between star systems. So nebula is one of the most gorgeous images that you're going to see. But honestly, if you go through most of your life not knowing what a nebula is, you're going to be just fine. It's some kind of space thing. That, that's okay. You really just need to know the ordering of, you know, we, we start off with the universe. We go down to galaxy, right? These are where galaxies are formed. But inside of galaxies are tons and tons and tons of stars. So we're going to talk a little bit more about these stars. A really cool image that talks about um, what the stars are made of. Really cool video if you get a chance to see that. So where are we in space? We're in the solar system. Please write this definition down. The solar system is a system. A system is just a bunch of moving parts that work together. So it's a system that's made up of or composed of the sun. The sun is a star, just like any of the other stars that you see. The only reason that our sun looks different than all those other stars you see in the night sky is because it's close to us compared to those other ones. That's it. That's the only reason why. Um, and the planets and other celestial bodies that travel around the sun. So celestial bodies are just objects that are out in space that would be considered to be any planets or moons or asteroids any of those things that are out there in space are considered to be celestial bodies so we have eight planets that all orbit around the sun 
okay? The solar system is drawn together by gravity, so is everything, right? At the center of our solar system is the sun. At the center of our galaxy will be a massive black hole. And kind of mentioned this before, but every star out there is likely to be its own solar system, right? With its own set of planets. That doesn't mean that they all are just like ours though. So just because ours are organized in this particular way, doesn't mean that they are organized. Like It's not always that the gas giants are further out. In fact, a lot of them that we've found, you see these gas giants are really close to the sun. We sometimes refer to those types of planets as hot Jupiters because they're so much closer to them. Some of these planets don't have rings. Some of them have no rocky planets, right? There's all these different um, ways that you can kind of organize the planets. And um, we don't really know exactly what's out there. What just doesn't mean that there is life on any of these two. Um, we don't know how special our solar system is to have life in it. And that red dividing line is where the asteroid belt would be, which kind of separates the terrestrial planets, which are on the left, those are the rocky planets, and the gas giants are the gaseous planets, which are on the right side there. So we're going to take a look at some size comparison because it is awesome to see things to scale. Here is the Earth to scale of the sun. This is only like maybe one quarter of the sun right here. It's a lot bigger than this, and look how small that the Earth is to scale on it. I love this image too. If you look here, you could see that there's the sun, obviously. If you look down, you can see some of the eight planets. The When this goes away, you'll see that the um, Earth plus the moon is right around there, right? And then you compare that to the size of the sun. So the sun contains about 99% of all of the mass, all of like the weight and the mass together is within the sun. And the 1% is everything else that's left over. So it is massive, right? Absolutely. And uh, we're so tiny compared to it. So pop quiz, you just saw the sun right there. What color is the sun? I want you to think for a second before you, I want you to think, have an answer in your head. What do you think it is? Well, let's see. If you look at the top left image, I mean, it looks kind of orangish, yellowish, I'd say. Right. If you look down here, it's a darker orange right there, more reddish at this point. Interesting. If you look over here, this is the sun out, it, uh, a picture of our sun from a telescope out in space. And what do you notice? It's white. Right. And if you look down here, this is another sunset, but it's not a sunset on Earth. It's a sunset on Mars. So that's why it looks so much smaller in the horizon and why it looks whiter. Because you could argue that our star is white, actually. So why doesn't it look that way to us? Well, all of the light is coming towards us, and it has to go through all the layers of our atmosphere. And sometimes our atmosphere is really thick. Well, it always is pretty thick compared to other planets. So it scatters all those different wavelengths of light, and we only see certain wavelengths to us, namely the yellowish, orangish, reddish. Those ones come in, and the further down it is when it's sunsetting, only certain wavelengths are coming at that direct angle. So that's why the red light is able to get in more easily to us. But that doesn't really happen on Mars because it has a much thinner atmosphere. So that's why it looks more like it's natural color, you can argue, which is white. And there's all sorts of different um, stars that are out there. You have Regal over here, Betelgeuse, or sometimes referred to as Betelgeuse. And Betelgeuse is clearly a red-shifted star. Regal is more closer to the blue side of it. Um, you could see some of the star size comparisons over here. So even though they looked similar in size right here, look how much smaller Regal actually is compared to Betelgeuse over there. And then you can see that our sun is just a little tiny dot compared to all these other ones, how much bigger it is, right? Here's our sun compared to the, one of the largest found stars ever, V.Y. Canis Majoris. And if you look here, these are some of the constellations that are out in our night sky. So this is the Orion constellation. The reason I'm showing you this is because one of the easiest ones that you can spot with the naked eye just by looking outside. And you can always tell because it has the three stars that are right next to each other right there. That's called Orion's Belt. On the bottom right-hand corner, you have Regal or Rigel. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. Um, I call it Regal. Now, Regal is sometimes referred to as the foot that crushes. It's one of, like I think, the top four brightest stars that you'll see in the night sky. And then on the top left, you'll always see Betelgeuse right there. Because it's redshifted, a lot of people mistake it for the planet Mars. 
but it's not. It's always going to be with this, this constellation right here. And Betelgeuse is considered to be a red giant that's going to explode at one point. Hmm. Wonder when that will happen. Um, it's predicted to happen anytime between now and the next 500 years, where it will call go supernova and uh, basically explode. Yeah. So we have to talk a little bit about light. This is what's referred to as the electromagnetic spectrum. All right, what does that mean? When the sun is producing light, it's actually producing all of this stuff. The entire electromagnetic spectrum is coming from the sun. So gamma rays are coming from it, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible light, infrared, microwave light, or radio waves. All of these things are coming from the sun. You might be saying, well, we only see a little bit of that. And you're right. All the light that we see is actually just within this little narrow band called visible light. And that's located right here. So it starts on the lowest end of it is violet. And then it goes to blue and green and yellow and orange and red. And then there's dark red, right? But there's actually certain shades of red that's beyond what we can see. It's like before red. What do we see? We don't see any of that. Our eyes can't perceive it. We actually call it infrared, right? And then over here you have violet light. But what's above violet? That's called ultraviolet. Now, we know that we interact with these waves because maybe you've heard that ultraviolet light can give you skin cancer, right? That's why we wear sunscreen because we're nervous of, uh, first of all, sunburn. That's un fortunate, but also it protects you from potential skin cancer from all that exposure to it. So we only see this, but there's a lot more that actually comes from the sun. If we look at this image right here, this is a pretty cool image. It's just basically lots of different cameras, like maybe there's an x-ray camera and a microwave background camera and a visible light camera, and they just splice them all together so you can see that with those different filters over it, you can see the sun in lots of different ways, but it's all showing those lights that are coming through. Now over here, this is important, right? We were talking about why that space telescope sees the sun as just being white. Well, that's because the out here is where the satellites are located. And then they can look at all these stars. They can see more than what we can see. Because if you look here, the radio waves from the sun are able to go right through here to our atmosphere. Infrared can cut right through. Visible light comes through. But some of that ultraviolet comes through. Some of it does not. It gets stopped right here. Some of those x-rays don't get through. They get scattered by our um, atmosphere right here. Same thing with some of these cosmic rays. Now, that's good because a lot of these rays are deadly to humans. And we don't want them to come through here. Right? So our atmosphere kind of protects us from some of those dangerous um, waves. But um, that's also why we don't get to see the full picture. Because when you add up all of the colors in the rainbow together, it forms white. And that is the white color of the sun, but it can be separated out through there. I don't know if you ever held like a prism before, like some kind of glass. And if you shine the light through the glass, it separates it and has this like rainbow of colors. And that's what you're doing. It's just taking the white light and separating it out, all those different particles.